Connor, the board and I have been talking, and we really think you need to lay off the Russians for a while. Yeah, I, I mean, even in your video about Russia, the Russians were still somehow the bad guys. We think it would be good if you made one video where you didn't demonize the Russians. A video where I don't demonize the Russians? Oh, I know! What? No! Do you want to get assassinated? This video is brought to you by Dashlane. It's 1944, and the Poles have become slightly annoyed with indulging their uninvited Nazi guests. For five years, they'd put up with their funny banners and genocidal tendencies, and it was finally time to clean house. There was only one problem. The Nazis had a few guns. And they weren't house guests, they were an occupying military force. Luckily for the Poles, they had this little trick up their sleeve called fighting back, and boy oh boy did that go gr well actually it was a bit of a mixed bag. By July of 1944, however, Germany had been pushed back to the outskirts of Warsaw by the Red Army, and this left the AK with a difficult decision. Would they fight to liberate their capital? Or not? You see, the AK had helped the Soviets retake several other Polish cities, and each successful battle always ended with the same conundrum. The city would be liberated, but all the Polish officers would mysteriously disappear, and the returning government was always a little more communist than everyone remembered. However, if the Poles didn't rise up in support of the advancing Red Army, the AK could lose its credibility and would probably be branded as traitors by the Soviets and left to die by the other allies. Alright guys, what do we do? Well, we have all these guns, just kind of lying around. What are you thinking? Well, I'm just I'm just saying that I think it would be kind of a waste if we j you know. All right, I'm convinced. We start tomorrow. For the past couple of weeks, the AK had been secretly moving in troops and weapons from the surrounding countryside. All of these 40,000 Polish soldiers in Warsaw were to be notified within two hours of the uprising. Now, just to clarify, out of the 40,000 AK members in Warsaw, less than half were armed, but they all had legs, so everything was up and running. <laughs> waka waka! So it turns out that telling 40,000 people to grab their pitchforks within two hours was pretty hard before Twitter. So when the uprising began at 5pm on August 1st, many resistance members were nowhere near where they were supposed to be. However, this wouldn't be too much of an issue because the Soviets would be reinforcing the Poles any minute now. <clears throat> That's your guys' cue. Oh no, I dropped script. Now, just to be fair, from the Soviet point of view, it would be totally stupid for them to intervene in Warsaw while the Germans were fighting the anti-communist Poles. It's like if you worked at McDonald's and two Karens walked in and started yelling at each other and asking to speak to the other's manager. Are you gonna intervene? Um, no. Even without Soviet support, however, the first day of the uprising was actually fairly successful. In just a few hours of fighting, nearly two-thirds of Warsaw was in Polish hands. However, many Polish units were unable to link up with each other, creating pockets of Polish resistance, with further pockets of German resistance often inside. Additionally, the uprising on the Praga side of the Vistula had been crushed by the Germans, making Soviet aid even less likely. Most importantly though, the Poles had captured several large cemeteries that could be used to drop in the Polish Independent Parachute Brigade. That was still happening, right? Can we please go help Warsaw? What's the magic word? Market Garden? What's that? 
boy howdy do I have a surprise for you. By the end of the second day, General Bor Komorovsky of the AK was finally able to make radio contact with London and sent a desperate plea for aid to the Allies. Britain and America promised a major supply drop that would be signaled by the playing of a special song on the radio. Oh, come on! Rick Astley had spoken. There would be no aid that night. On August 3rd, the same refrain was broadcast signaling no aid. However, the AK sent spotters to watch for planes anyway, and to their surprise, they actually spotted several overhead which dropped small amounts of weapons and supplies. Interestingly, these planes were actually flown by Polish airmen who had taken off from Italy without orders. Many of the planes didn't even have enough fuel to make it back. The AK was alone, and Stalin wanted to keep it that way. The Soviets refused to allow Allied planes to land on their airfields, completely halted their armies across the river, and replaced all of their air force's maps of Warsaw with maps of Wyoming, making it impossible to find the city! So generously given the month off by the Soviets, the Germans were able to assemble thousands of troops, including an SS brigade comprised of released violent criminals, a battalion of Russian collaborators, a unit of Azeris, and elements of several panzer divisions. There were also several Hungarian army units stationed around Warsaw at the beginning of the uprising, but they refused to fight against the Poles and actually sabotaged the Germans' efforts in the city until they were deployed. So now, the next time you see Poles and Hungarians bromancing in the comment section, at least you know why. So you may be noticing a pattern that Poland's allies in World War II seem to always let it down, and um, you'd be right, because by week two, no large-scale allied airdrop had happened, and the Soviets were still nowhere to be seen. Interestingly, the Germans actually attempted to airdrop supplies to their cutoff soldiers, but the front lines were so fluid that they would sometimes land in between the Germans and Poles, leading to a race for the Nazi loot box. Throughout the second week, the Germans were able to drive a wedge west to east that split the main Polish stronghold in two. The headquarters in Old Town and the units fighting in the city center were now cut off from each other. Luckily, there happened to be a convenient, secret, underground passage that led straight from Old Town to the city center. Unluckily, it was also the sewer. Traffic through the sewer soon became so frequent that General Bor Komorowski actually created a designated staff to control passage through the tunnels. Imagine how disappointing that job would be. Everyone around you is dying for their country or whatever, and you're stuck as a doo-doo water tour guide. By the start of the third week, the situation inside of Old Town was getting pretty bad. The two-kilometer area held by the Poles had been bombed day and night, shelled by a 600mm mortar, and constantly assaulted by the Germans. Finally, General Borkomorowski decided that he didn't like spending his days covered in rubble and getting shot at, so he figured it would probably be a good idea to evacuate Old Town. However, there was no way that he could get all 5,000 of his soldiers underground, because Sewer Team 6 wouldn't have been able to guide them all, so he needed to find another way. Alright guys, what do we do? Well, we have all these weapons, just kind of lying around. No, Ed, we don't. We, we don't. That's the point he's trying to make. I, I'm just, I'm just saying that it would be kind of a waste. Right? We are launching an offensive on August 30th. The initial attack by the Kedov Battalion bamboozled the Germans and was actually quite successful. However, as waves of civilians started fleeing through the breach, the attack stalled and Germany seized the initiative. Only the units closest to the city center were able to escape from Old Town. The rest would have to go through the sewers. This completed the Holy Trinity. The trees speak Vietnamese. The snow speaks Finnish. But the sewers... The sewers speak Polish. By the middle of September, the Polish position was desperate. Connor, this is like the third time you've said that. Really? This is your first bit in like three months, and that was the best you could come up with? 
Well, technically, you come up with all my stuff. On September 10th, after over a month of just kind of hanging out, the Soviets finally started doing, you know, army things, and launched artillery strikes against the Germans. However, of the few salvos that the Soviets fired, a suspicious number actually hit Polish positions instead of German ones. I'm so glad that the Soviets are finally shelling the Germans. I know, right? It's, it's so nice to not be on the receiving end. Is it just me, or are those explosions getting closer? A week later, on September 17th, the US Air Force finally staged a major resupply mission to Warsaw, but of the over 1,200 canisters dropped, only 21 were recovered by the Poles. The rest were mistakenly dropped into German hands. America wouldn't send more aid. Soviet military action halted again on September 18th. Warsaw's fate was effectively sealed. The Poles continued to fight in the city center until October 2nd, 1944. The uprising that was only supposed to last a few days, lasted 63. After the Polish surrender, Hitler decided that it would probably be a good idea to just blow up everything left in the city, which is honestly such a Taurus thing to do. While the Soviets watched from across the river, Nazi engineers systematically destroyed what was left of the city. By the time the Red Army entered Warsaw on January 17, 1945, the pre-war population of 1.3 million had been reduced to just 25,000, and 85% of the city had been completely leveled. Actually, nope, sorry, <laughs> I forgot this one doesn't have a happy ending. If people are willing to watch Warsaw go kaboom, who's saying that they aren't willing to watch your privacy go kaboom too? <laughs> if you're like me and you hate remembering passwords, but also hate having your social security number stolen because you forgot to log out of Club Penguin in 2012, you might just be the type of person who would love Dashlane. Once you've downloaded the app for free on your first device, Dashlane automatically looks through all the passwords you've typed and sorts them into a nice list that is only accessible to you. Not even Dashlane has access to them. You can then hook this up to as many devices as you would like with the free 30-day trial of Dashlane Premium you'll get when you use my link in the description. Every single download also really helps support the channel, so that's cool. After using Dashlane for the past couple of weeks, I've really noticed how much time it saved me. Dashlane's password autofill is really so much better than Google's, and not having to type in the same password over and over again is really super nice. Dashlane also has has a built-in VPN, a super cool password generator, and alerts you if your data is ever at risk. They even keep an eye out for you on the dark web, so if you ever pop up for sale on there, I mean, at least you'll know. The best part about this is that using my link in the description, you can try all of this for 30 days for absolutely free. You won't even have to give them your credit card number or anything. It's just a good old-fashioned free trial. My favorite kind. Uh, we also have a Discord now. The link is in the description if you want to join that. I could put music in here to make this less awkward, but I actually I think I'll just end the video instead.